Welcome to the Tiffany Micah podcast. What we do here is build the strength and courage in you to accomplish your big dreams and goals in your sport. No longer will you feel limited. You won't feel you're not good enough. You won't question whether you will make it. Those doubts will disappear because you will have the competitive edge over your opponents and leave them in your wake. And the bonus is others will notice. Listen up and take notes because I will show you exactly how to do it. Hey there, this is Tiff from the Tiffany Micah podcast and welcome to this week's Lessons Learned. As you know, this, the lessons that we learn each week, we need to identify what works and what doesn't work uh, so that we can keep moving forward and, and keep achieving our goals and our dreams. Also, these lessons learned are lessons that I've learned along the way or something that someone in a conversation that's come up through a coaching session that has said, you know what, this is the biggest lesson that I've learned for the week and this is so great that you're teaching me how to identify these because then I understand what I need to be do what I need to be doing to, to move forward. So this is why I share these lessons learned each week is because not only that they help me and, and help my clients, but they also help you because I want you to identify what's working, what's not working, and then, okay, how can we then move forward from this, okay? So this week, I wanted to share with you uh, something that I've been watching this show recently. It's a lot, well, this li- the lifestyle channel here that, that we've got here at, on Foxtel, And I'm really enjoying watching some shows such as Love It or List It, Selling Houses, um, you know, all geared around renovating houses, looking for a new home in various areas, not only here in Australia, but around the world and so on. So I'm quite fascinated with with, with that recently. And I've never really been overly interested in it before, but, you know, as a future business, I'm looking at possibly buying homes, renovating them and selling them and so on with my mum. So, but I find it quite fascinating what goes on. So this, over this last weekend, I thought, oh, I might watch the Bake Off show. Now, I actually don't watch, (laughs) there's a reason I don't watch the Bake Off shows and cooking shows is because one, I'm not overly into cooking, but I'm getting more interested in cooking, (laughs) but they make, make such yummy food and I don't want the temptation of like, oh gosh, I've got to go and learn how to make something like that or what's the make a whole batch of chocolate chip cookies and well, then I'll want to go and make a whole batch of chocolate chip cookies and then what will happen, I'll eat them all and then I can't eat just one. I'm, you know, I have that uh, obsessive personality as such is that, one is we just won't do it for me. I have to have one or every, if I have one, I've got to have so much more or I just don't have it at all. And and that's the better way that I can control it. Even like I love chocolates and lollies, but I can't just have one. So if somebody offers me one and I take it, I'm going to want more. So I know that about myself. So I don't put myself in a situation where I'm like, okay, well, let's just keep eating. Right. So anyway, I've, I've I'll share with you why I'm sharing this with you. So I thought the other day, I thought, well, what? let's just watch the show. Let's see what the show is actually about. And I actually found it quite mind-blowing. And it wasn't really about the awesome desserts and the sweets that they were cooking. It was really the mindset. And it was the mindset around this bake-off. It was a competition. And if we look at it, what is the bake-off based based on it's based on your performance what else is based on your performance your sport so with the bake-off it's it's looks at your performance level so it's how well you cook how the taste of the food is how well you present your product or your food and when there is a competition involved what's a huge part of that competition it's pressure isn't it 
So where does the pressure come from? The pressure comes from competing against others. The pressure comes from the time frame to cook your food. The pressure comes from the presentation of your food. The pressure comes from how your food will taste. Will it be good enough? And what happens in sport if we really think about it? Well, we compete against others. We have a time frame to complete. So the time frame the time frame does vary. So in sport, you know, depending on what the sport you play, it could be the like a football or a soccer match, which is a time frame. Swimming is like a race time. Tennis is the amount of sets. Golf is like how many holes you play. But that's all related to time. So that's similar to the Bake Off as well, isn't it? Plus the presentation. So the presentation in sport is really about how you perform, how well you play and execute your game. And also the taste of victory or the taste of defeat. So there'll be a winner and there'll be a loser or or many losers. So I found that really interesting watching this show because I was like, Bake Off versus sport, this is so much the same for with regards to mindset. Now, I knew that anyway because everything that we look at is always around mindset, but I found it quite fascinating because I was looking at how they coped with the pressure that was placed on them and how they dealt with the pressure. So what I, what I identified was there was some experienced cooks. So what the experienced cooks did there was they focused on just – doing what needed to be done and they were just focusing on one step at a time and I always encourage that when people are playing sport all you can control is what you're doing in that moment so you just focus on that one shot at a time the second thing I noticed was there was a few kept expressing how hard it was so it's just it was almost like they were just this is too hard I don't think I'm able to get through this The third thing I noticed was a few people complained that they weren't feeling so well and that's why they won't do well in the challenge. So they were making excuses. The fourth thing I noticed is a few had an exact plan, like they were really clear about where they were going. So they were clear on the end product, what what they wanted their, their food to look like at the end. They had done the recipe many times before and knew exactly what to do and how to get on with it. And the fifth thing I noticed was that there was one particular participant that kept saying, I'm always the bride's maid and never the bride. Now that just flew up red flags for me because if you're always saying that you always will come second, then you know what will happen? You will always come second or worse. If you keep saying that you're never a winner, well, you're not going to be a winner because that's what you believe, okay? So what do we learn from this bake-off? Even though it was a, co- a, a cooking competition, what is it that you could learn from the bake-off and how would it help you in your sport? And it's all about how you approach the competition regardless of the event. That's, that's, that's key. And I'll repeat that again. It's all about how you approach the competition regardless of the event. So it doesn't matter if you're playing sport, doesn't matter if you're at work, doesn't matter if you've got your own business, doesn't matter if you are cooking, doesn't matter if you're dancing, whatever it is that you are doing, you're an actor, it's about the approach to the competition. So again, it's mindset. So what are the big takeaways from this? Well, the first one is really be clear on your direction. So what you want to be able to do is you want to see the end result, like the big picture result before you begin. You have to have that vision in mind. Where is it that you want to end up? And then you know what then you have to do to work towards it because you know what what the big picture is. There's no point in going, well, I'd like to do this but I'm not really sure. Be clear exactly what you want to do. So they were, had a specific task that they had to do. They had to, you know, cook a specific type of biscuit or cake or whatever it is that they needed to be doing. You want to become, you know, the best, uh, number one sports person in your sport, or you might just, what I'm going to leave it at that because that's what you're here for. That's what you want to do. But you've got to be clear on what, where, what it is that you want, okay? Number two, have a plan. So you need to plan out exactly what you've got to do. And it's just like a recipe. It's a recipe for cooking. 
So your recipe, your plan is your recipe for your success in your sport. So you need to make sure that you're crafting out that. Number three, do not make excuses. Focus on giving your best effort in the time frame that you have. And all you can do is give your best effort each time that you compete. Sometimes it's going to be great. Sometimes it's going to not be so great. Sometimes it's going to be somewhere in the middle. And all of that is all okay. But do not make excuses for your performance. I see that quite often with people when they're not playing well in sport. They, oh, well, I I had a bad sleep last night. Well, you know what? You still got to get out there and perform. It's going to build your character if you actually bring out more out of you to really accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish. And number four, believe in you. Believe you can win. And it doesn't matter at times if you don't really doesn't matter at times if you don't because sometimes you won't but believing you can do it and believing you can go for number one that's what it's all about you've got to believe deeply like you see I, I love watching Nadal play tennis and I love watching Djokovic play tennis they'll never say die they have such deep belief that they can get out there and do it and they give everything they put themselves on the line and sometimes they get over the line and they win but they put themselves out there because they believe they can do it they believe they can win and that's what you need to do you need to believe in you so I'll just repeat those big takeaways again number one be clear on your direction be clear on the big picture number two have a plan so craft your recipe for success Number three, do not make excuses. And number four, believe in you, believe that you can win. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Those lessons learned are really good to actually look at something very different from what actually what you do. And you know what? It's all the same. It's all the same. It's just a different type of event. The mindset is the same. It's how you cope with pressure. Isn't it? Absolutely. So some exciting news coming up uh, in the next month. I'm actually going to be releasing my new book, Focus, How to Reach Your Potential in Sport, Business and Life. And it's all geared around helping you, giving you the foundations that you need for success in your sport, in your business, in your life. It applies to everything. I share stories about disappointment that I had, regret, uh, how I turned it around, all the as I said, foundations in place, the blueprint that you need in place to help you move forward to where you want to go. The last chapter is is a plan laid out for you to go through and work out your direction and how you're going to do that. We actually map that out in the book. So I look forward to releasing that and sharing that with you. But right now, what I want you to do is use these lessons learned that you've learned from this bake-off versus sport Be clear on your direction. Have and craft your recipe for success. Do not make excuses. Believe in you. Believe you can win. And then I want you to dream big. Believe in you and go after your dreams. Have an absolutely awesome day. Take care. Talk soon. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you haven't yet downloaded the number one deadly mistake athletes make, make sure you go to tiffany-mica.com and download the number one deadly mistake athletes make. Share with me what you like best about what you heard in the comments section wherever you hear this episode. Share with your friends that you know that would benefit from these episodes and please leave a five-star review wherever you hear these episodes. I would really appreciate it. Dream big, believe in you, go after your dreams, have an absolutely awesome day.